Hi everyone, thanks for coming and for staying this long. Um, my name is, yes, Slava Turik. I'm a product vision expert at Wargaming. And actually I'm going to talk about what vision expert, uh, product vision experts are and what actually they do at Wargaming. So, um, a little bit info about Wargaming. I, I'm sure you all know what this company is and what's it famous for. Uh, but before um, Wargaming released this World of Tanks game, uh, there were about nine years of uh, productive game development and there were several hits um, that Wargaming made. So it's not a company of just one game or one genre or whatever. And uh, currently, mm, Wargaming is looking for a new blue ocean, like a new niche on the market that uh, Wargaming could uh, enter and or create um, and uh, does establish a new um, entertainment. So, uh, to think uh, and to find this blue ocean, uh, Wargaming needs experts, uh, which uh, are just, um, uh, which have this knowledge and this experience to uncover a new ocean. Um, and here's what we as experts do. Well, first of all, the expert, as uh, we understand them, are people uh, who have wide knowledge, uh, who have a huge track record of games played and developed. And um, also, uh, with their expertise in development, they, are, uh, they have this focus on something, like um, maybe we have uh, guys with a uh, mobile expertise, we have guys with online expertise, one guy who, is, who was involved in console game development. And uh, we have this uh, table. This is... Um, <laughs> forgot its name. Well, anyway, so we can see who is expert, who is uh, focused um, on uh, one or another uh, way. Uh, our job is divided into like unequal parts, our solo job and our group job. Um, solo, uh, we run our own projects and I will talk later about uh, how they are made. And uh, also we gather in this uh, like collective game designer, we call the Idea Generation Club. Quite stupid, but that works. Uh, and uh, I'll, tol I'll tell you about how it works too. So, the ideas. First, first things that we do, we um, come, out, uh, come out with the ideas. We generate them in uh, several uh, different processes. Um, so, step one is uh, idea, which is born uh, either by the product vision expert himself or uh, while we gather in club and talk about different things and suddenly one of us realized, what if we make this game with uh, like this setting and with this mechanic and we start to uh, mesh and mesh and mesh and mesh and finally one of us uh, says, okay, I know how to make this uh, game and he becomes this idea knight. The, well, usually it's more known as a product owner. So um, after this idea is generated and the idea knight is uh, mm, up, uh, uh, he makes, he prepares this pitch thing, this concept thing, and the next uh, meeting is about, he, he tells us what this game will be about, what's it, uh, downsides and USPs and stuff like that, and uh, again, we talk, we talk, we talk, we evaluate like each line in the pitch, and uh, after that, uh, this product owner, he comes up with a new iteration, and we talk it and we'll do it again and then again, until um, there is a separate process, uh, green light process, uh, at, at which the officials uh, decide whether this project is a go or not. Um, here is an example of one of our experiments. It's not known because it's internal. Uh, it's already closed. And it started about the last summer when people, uh, when we gathered um, to talk about the idle and indirect games. Uh, the if you don't know, the indirect games, indirect control games, are like uh, Majesty or Godwill or uh, Progress Quest, are the games th uh, in which player control d does not directly control units or uh, his avatar or whatever. Everything that happens on screen is like happens uh, because not because player uh, pointed there or uh, but he made the mm, the environment that way. So the designed units is uh, like attacking des uh, designated monster. So this experiment uh, started as uh, one of such games uh, without the clear mechanics, just because we want to make this indirect game. What would we, what would we do? Uh, first, we came up with a setting, and the setting was like, okay, there are different planets with their own different settings, and we can do like 
whatever we want with them, like create a content, sci-fi content or a futuristic content, modern, whatever. So it will be like, uh, so very lean in terms of uh, different settings. Uh, and the idea night was born and uh, he took this game, he started this uh, concept proof uh, and after, after he, uh, after it was the green light, uh, the budget was cut and he said like, okay, we can't do all these planets with different settings, we have to stop on something. And the studio that worked on the prototype for this experiment, they suggested to make a um, fantasy because the studio was uh, very experienced in, se in uh, fantasy, in art and stuff like that. So Idea Night uh, shrunk this to fantasy setting and also it was a good idea to um, to make another pillar as the IP, as the, some known IP. And uh, the free IPs are the ones that are in, in public, in public domain. So he came up with the Van Helsing. You know this from Bram Stoker's Dracula, this vampire hunter. So it was a game about vampire hunter Van Helsing who is just hunting for different kind of monsters in fantasy setting and it's as far from these space planets <laughs> traveling as possible. It was quite interesting, but um, in the end uh, the project was closed because uh, uh, the idea night uh, realized that it's just impossible to deliver this game as uh, part of wargaming because uh, there are very high demands for wargaming games. They have to gather a lot of audience or generate a lot of money, it just wasn't it. it we we'll consider it an experiment, quite nice, and just said, okay, let's archive this. So, um, the club. Mm, we gather in this entity, the club, and the idea knight can ask us to make some job for him. For example, he can, uh, that's the main thing, uh, to evaluate the uh, concepts and uh, features that he comes up with, and uh, or maybe deconstruct a competitor. So he says like, okay, I have this game, which is a direct competitor to my uh, title, and uh, what you guys think about it? And we play this game and we uh, think what's it downsides and upsides and uh, consider what would suit best for his own title. Uh, of course, we test prototypes and milestones and whatever is given. And uh, we uh, solve specific questions. For example, in this uh, space field experiment, there was uh, a part uh, when the idea night came to us, I said, okay, I have this indirect control game and I have these gaps uh, in the gameplay mechanic and I want you guys to think what I could fill it with. Some narrative or maybe content or maybe some interactive uh, things. And we, we sat for two hours generating lots of ideas. I even wrote down some of them for myself. So um, that was mostly this, this kind of idea uh, work. And also we have to evaluate the third party products. Because uh, Wargaming, it's a big company, now 4,000 people working there. And uh, Wargaming uh, wants to um, globally expand. So he buys, uh, the Wargaming uh, buys another studios and uh, we recently created uh, a publisher entity called WG Labs with these contents and in the submitting their games things. And to evaluate these games that are submitted to WG Labs and or to evaluate the games that studio makes. For example, if we want to hire a studio, we want to know what they are uh, good in and uh, we evaluate their games. And uh, here how it goes. So we have these lists of questions uh, that we ask to, uh, to the one who delivers us the, this game about what, what is this developer, what they have done, what they're up to, and uh, we ask questions about game design. We, we're like, we s fill it out. So uh, we're delivered uh, pitches and concepts. So we just take a look and like make evaluation of each line there, stating like, ah, oh, yes, this will work. No, this will not work. Like this for this game, this setting isn't chosen properly. They should stick to I don't know sci-fi instead of uh, space fantasy. Yeah, we did this uh, background check with the developers, and we compare the the most important thing I think uh, what we do. Uh, we compare the ideas that are put in this pitch to the real market trends. Because if someone comes up with a game that is, uh, well, historically uh, leans to man audience with some uh, catchy eye art like cartoons, and we think like, I mm, don't think it will work. Maybe some specific audience. 
Uh, and uh, after that, we collect our feedback and send our thoughts and our uh, propositions to the, uh, to the one who ordered this. Um, also, we take a look at the playable things. Ah, the competence metrics, that's the name of the table. Uh, to assign, uh, we, we have these games coming up, like maybe two or three games every uh, two weeks, and we have to take a look at them and write our feedback on them. And uh, to do that, we assign experts. They play the game, play the game, play the game. They write feedback, they gather in the, in the club, and uh, they discuss what, what they saw in this game. Did they, say, did they see any potential in this? Maybe it would uh, be better to for someone to take this project as idea night, for example. We, we had one such game. And uh, just break, breaking down the game, like kind of reverse engineering, trying to understand what the developers meant to do. And, uh, well, what we do while we're not playing or discussing, we play. Uh, we play mobile games, we play console games, PC games, each new hit, each, like, anything that's in the press. It's, uh, it helps us to just to be in the trend, to understand what's running the market currently. And uh, also, we just build up our expertise by that. We all, uh, for example, we, um, no, we share our specialty expertise. For example, our uh, mobile experts. Uh, recently, we discussed, I think it was Superdat or uh, Apenny uh, research uh, about the audience and the money of 2K15. Uh, and our mobile expert just did a brilliant analysis of this uh, research. Uh, so even if someone wasn't aware of what's going on, for example, on China market, now he is. Um, yeah, we review and deconstruct trendy games and technologies. We deconstructed Clash Royale. Mm, well, I think everyone did. Uh, uh, to find if there are some good ideas that we could implement in our own projects. And we talk to other experts, like you, uh, outside of Wargaming. So that was fast, so we still have time for questions, I think. One, one, one. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the talk, Slava. My question is, um, the more people involved in the process, uh, the harder it is to make a decision and to agree with each other. So what's the protocol for making the decision? Mm, we have this protocol that uh, each, each, uh, each of us writes a feedback, uh, sends to the secretary. We have a, the club secretary. And he gathers and forms this feedback as a, in free form or as in table. We have some processes with the WG Labs. Uh, we have, for example, uh, at first, uh, WG Labs doesn't send us game or documentation. They send us like uh, the the application. So they say like, we have this game from these guys in this genre. Do you want to take a look? And we're like, yes or no. And if we say yes, they send us the additional documents, the prototypes, the builds, whatever. So we can uh, take a closer look at it. And after we are done with this, we write our feedback, form it in uh, in one one file, and send it back to um, WG Labs or whoever sent us the game. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay. Uh, thank you for the talk. And uh, my question was more about the evaluation of the uh, product vision experts' work uh, in itself. I mean... Uh, like KPIs? Uh, what? Like KPIs? <laughs> no. Uh, the thing is, uh, the question is, so... At the end of the day, what's the goal of uh, the product vision expert? So in uh, our solo job, uh, we have some, um, some things to do. For example, we have to deliver uh, a number of pitches, and uh, they have to make uh, until at least two prototype stage. And we have these like KPIs. But and uh, as for team job, it's uh, like we have some well, reasonable time to uh, answer on the application of the game application so we like it's delivered we play it we take maybe a week if it's a big game for example we had some several mobas and we had to take a lot of time because it's harder to gather the uh, number of people that are needed to play a multiplayer game than just to play it so mm, no more than a week needs us for us to break down a game okay thank you <coughs> uh, 
Um, my question is about community. On which stage uh, you also take into account community opinion about uh, games features uh, when you decide to implement some feature that was suggested by on the forums? Who is uh, working with this? Who is responsible for? And uh, also, uh, how uh, difficult to make decision to roll back some big feature that you are working on a, long of, uh, a lot of months to take it out from uh, production? I think it's a good question, and it should be asked to production team, not me. Well, uh, the currently the only game that uh, our R&D uh, department released is a Master of Orion. And uh, it's obviously they work with community very close, but it's mostly the studio work. We are just creative control directors, maybe producers, these kind of guys. So we work with the community, we hear them, uh, but we do not tell studio just do this or do that. Uh, it's, it's a hard question. Of course, it's, it's heavily context-dependent depend, uh, thing because uh, we have some experience, we, we have lots of experience, but uh, we cannot predict anything. We do not predict numbers, for example. It's not just our job. We have a business intelligence unit for this. Uh, and uh, as for our, uh, I don't know, expertise, well, the client have to rely on us. <laughs> Um, let's see the table. Mm, I think I'm a bit of mobile and online. Uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I covered the names because uh, when I showed this uh, presentation to our guys, they said, hey, can you cover our names? I don't want to be like known to the whole world. <laughs> so I think I'm the Mr. Red. No, Mr. no, I'm not. Uh, maybe I'm Mr. Orange? No. <laughs> I think I'm, mm, looks like I'm Mr. Yellow. Yeah. Mobile, PC, MMO, and working with studio and a bit of marketing. Yeah, that's me. Brandon? What kind of guidance are you seeing right now or what's in the next step? What's the next iteration? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's part of my job. Okay. Uh, well, currently we see trends, uh, uh, for example, in terms of uh, mobile, uh, we have synchronous multiplayer, as Clash Royale showed us that that's the way to make games now. And also I see that games that, s um, the games that are uh, clones of other games are, um, well, more often become these uh, fair play multiplayer, not just some uh, pay to win or, uh, I don't know, if you invest and, uh, you know, upgrade faster, not these kind of games, but some f f fair play games. So I think the yeah two most uh, obvious trends now are synchronous fair to fair play multiplayer. So I know there's been a lot of talk in wargaming about an integrated battle space between World of Tanks, World of Warplanes, World of Warships. Is that anything you look into, kind of extensions or plugins to the existing platforms? Like World of Spaceships? <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Um, Whatever I know, I can tell about the, the this section. Um, <laughs> actually, uh, our research department, uh, research and development department, we are not uh, like we don't have anything to do with the world of and games like them. Just curious. These are very separate and uh, very enclosed projects. Um, first of all, listen to experts because they, they are not, I don't know, intended to lie to you. It's their job to show their expertise and uh, to make sure they understand their client. That's why, for example, I give free advice to anyone who needs them. And uh, of course, if you have a playable game, you can submit to WG Labs and be sure that I will take a look at it. Okay. It's good to know. 
Okay, um, that's it then. Slava, thanks. Really good.